Hey guys, this is Wonder for TeamLiquid.net, and I'm here with Devil Walk. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, you know, we're happy. We just won against NIP, so uh, can't can't be sad, right? Yeah. So you guys are the first team through to the uh, semifinals. Um, how do you feel? You know, f coming into this event, how did you feel after the last couple of events? We felt like. Um, it was like a half and half because we don't really feel like we're on shape yet. Mm -hmm. We didn't have that much uh, practice. We actually didn't. Uh, after we came up from Bucharest, we just took a couple of days break and uh, just didn't practice at all, just to clear our heads and you know not think too much about our our performances back then. We obviously wanted to win both uh, ECA and and PGL, but we didn't manage to do so. And uh, we're coming here with a fresh, pretty relaxed mindset. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so far so good, I guess. Yeah. So recently, Crims hasn't been doing, you know, amazingly, and Flusher has attempted to, you know, pick up his, pick up the slack. But in this event, Crims has gone, you know, crazy in some of these games, going absolutely massive. H how do you feel now? You know, what what's the current status of Fnatic? Did you guys do anything specific to, you know, get back your form, or is it just, you know, each player finding their own streak again? I mean, you could look at it in like different ways, I guess. But uh, you know, we put so much pressure on ourselves the the last two events that we kind of toned it down a bit uh, and kind of like, ah, we'll see how it goes. We'll play our best, and you know, not you know, we already have so much pressure from the community. There's no need to pressure yourself too much. So we kind of let that down a bit, and um, it's it's working right now. You know, Crims playing amazingly this event, uh, has done a lot of clutches, big plays, and uh, you know, I feel like everyone is just playing great, and we have get great uh, chemistry in game, uh, not a lot of whining, it's it's just a positive attitude even even if we lose a couple of rounds in a row, so um, yeah, just, uh, just feels good, I think it's about positivity and uh, just keeping things calm and, and relaxed uh, during the games, and I think we've managed to do so, so far. So, you know, Thorin keeps going on about Fnatic has no real bad maps. But um, with Nuke getting out of the pool now and putting train in, do you guys feel the need to s you know start practicing train with the next major maybe coming up and ESL1 Cologne and all those new s these new online league season? Uh, I mean, since Nuke is our worst map and that is being removed, we actually don't have any... Uh, real reason to actually practice train. We're obviously gonna try it and see how we feel about it and if we're comfortable on it, uh, like we did on Overpass and Cobblestone. But um, it depends. Like if we feel more comfortable on that map, then maybe let's say for example, Dust Two, which is like kind of a shaky map for all teams. Like uh, it's not the best map to have like as your main map because it's the the most upsetting map. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, it's if you're, if you're playing a, like as, as a mix, you would want to play Dust Two against like a proper team. So, um, like maybe there there's some shifting in our map pool uh, in that ca case. But uh, you know, we haven't tried it. We haven't even gone through uh, the stuff uh, on on train yet. We haven't even looked it up. We haven't been <laughs> on the on the map yet, okay. so to say. So we're just practicing for these events. Mm -hmm. And once train train uh, comes yeah. along, in um, I think it's Fragbite Masters first. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, yeah, uh, we'll we'll start to look at it, but um, right now we don't have any plans on on changing any any maps. But we'll see what happens once it we get there. Okay. So you know, sometime last year there was this kind of appearance of the sixth player. You know, we had Blade on um, Hellraisers. We we have Cuban on VP. We have we had Peter on Nip, and you're kind of the only play. You're you're the only coach that has kind of stayed throughout late 2014 into this new year how much input do you actually have you know in the mid-round calls do you what what exactly do you call out to the players well i usually try to talk as much as any other player uh during the game uh if someone is in a duel for example for some people it might be hard to actually make call outs at the same time so try to help out with that and obviously try to think out how to um like figure out the rotation system, s tell that to Kronos and come up with certain strategies uh, wha if we are behind. If, we if we're playing and things just work, like standard stuff, uh, and things just keep working for us, even though we might not win the rounds, but we're very close to winning them, uh, there's no real need for me to step in. I'll give small hints, small suggestions, but 
Uh, the real impact comes when we're actually losing rounds, um, and the real input where strategies uh, and stuff like that. Since me and Promise kind of think um, very differently, so my input is usually when we want to want to change our game style or game uh, game plan, basically, and then I'll step in and make a few calls. Uh, yeah, I can also call mid round as well if they if I see something they trust me, so they they'll just follow the call. So I mean, how much do you help outside of the game? So you know, you've you've put your uh, mid round calls in, and you've you know said your your words of encouragement. But after the games, th does the team sort of include you in maybe like demo reviews and new strategies? Do you bring you know new smokes or, or s strategies to them? Well, it's mostly me and Pronice who does the demo reviewing and uh, creating new tactics anyway, so it's us bringing it to the other players, basically. So um, me and Pronice develop things. Obviously, everyone has the ability to, to come up with their input and, and, and do that if they want to, but it's quite of a... It takes a lot of time, even though people might not think about it. If you want to look out new smokes uh, from a certain position or uh, create a new like tactic you have to really really think about it and you cannot just like oh let's go free a free b like 2b it doesn't really work you have to work out all the details as well so it takes a lot of time and uh, and uh, effort to do that so me and Pronos kind of uh, split that and uh, do things together and since we're also always sharing the same hotel room we usually go through the big game plan uh, the night before or or stuff like that yeah, I feel like the UI for, you know, demo reviewing is really kind of cumbersome. Like, tr just trying to say, like, all right, I'm trying to review, say, Crim's picking apps. And he, the, the moment happens, but then you can't really, you know, rewind 20 seconds. You have to just go back straight to a round or you have to mess with the thing. Do you have any tips? Um, because, you know, there I don't know if you've heard, but in NA, they're you know they're kind of lacking in demo reviews and analysts so do you have any tips to for any budding uh, in game leaders to say like hey th this is you know one or two major things that you you should look out for when reviewing a demo uh reviewing a demo is very <coughs> it's very different i think uh you shouldn't try to complicate things too much not uh, try to focus too much on anti stratting people i think uh, for me for me and Pronix for example, I'll try to have some anti strats always, uh, but I don't want to tell them to Pronex to like uh, mess with his head and his game plan. So I'll change the game plan uh, during the game instead, because there's so much things to think about. And also, if you're looking at a specific player, you have to look at everything that happens around him. So you have to figure out what triggers him to do this. Uh, and eventually, maybe you can bait that trigger into the him taking that duel and then you're an anti it. You know, it's uh, it's a lot of stuff you can look at and, you know, timings of specific things. When do they, like, uh, tendencies, uh, like, checking, like, do they like to go A, do they like to go B, maybe they'll put more defense, uh, stuff like that. So, um, you know, yeah. But otherwise, you know, with the, the actual UI, it's pretty, pretty bad. So uh, we actually have a, a demo review in config, so... Oh. So we have binds for everything. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so it speeds things up. Um, let's let's move topic to talk about sort of the um, ESL Pro League that just got announced. So there there were talks before of this kind of like Super League, and it got kind of you know delayed a little bit, but now it's finally out there. This online league. How do you guys feel about it? You know, twelve teams are invited, and you know there's three um, three to four matches. Uh, every every week, basically three three or four days, are are eaten up. How do you guys sort of balance that between you know other online leagues? Ah uh, well, we basically have no idea yet. I mean, we haven't started, so it's gonna be it's gonna be tough in the beginning uh, to balance things out. But we'll see and you know figure out the best way possible. Um, yeah, I I don't really know. I mean, it starts fourth of May, I think. So. Um, yeah, so we'll um, we'll figure things out once it gets to that point. But right now, we're taking one tournament one day at a time, so we're not overthinking things. Um, but I'm sure they have a plan with everything as well, with the the way they've set things up. So there, you know, the past few weeks have there's been an offline event every week. Um, how do you feel about this? Do you like this kind of like? I guess season that CS:GO is having, where you know there's like 
10 12 weeks of straight just event 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 or would you like it to be a bit more spread out well it's actually pretty spread out but the thing with counter strike right now there's or there's always been like it's always been like this it's there's no scheduled break for anyone so usually the only break that a player has is uh mid december to uh mid uh, january um and right now you know with everyone just coming trying to come into csgo there's tournaments every single day you can so there's a lot of yeah it's it's just a lot of um a lot of things all the time so like right now we've uh, been i think uh, it's gonna be five or six weekends in a row we've been in another country so um you know it's pretty stressful so we don't have any time to practice or review our things so i think everyone's play of counter strike or like level of counter strike goes down because uh everyone cannot practice and uh, review their stuff and do new things you don't have the time usually you uh, you had like one two weeks to prepare for an event but now you have like two days so you usually want to take a break because you've been in an intensive period where you have an event where you work 24 hours and think about the game 24 hours a day um, and you need some break you cannot think about Counter-Strike all the time you need to have a life as well so uh, w for us it's like we take the middle days between events we take them off and basically play at events you know so I mean so has it gotten to the point now where you know maybe the, the team or, or certain players just say like all right it's time we've been to you know five six events in a row maybe we just skip this one ha has there been a discussion like that there's always discussions like that um you know it's it's gotten to the point that we don't really like it doesn't really matter what kind of prestige or or uh, size of a tournament it is like sometimes you need to have a break and we're always discussing when should we take the break and uh, <laughs> they're all all of making fun of me but um yeah there's always discussions like that every every event we make and you know we decline or accept the invite we always have those thoughts uh, beforehand now we kind of took on too many in a row but um we'll make sure that that doesn't happen again because we need to have a, a downtime and a time to practice and uh, figure our fi figure our stuff uh, um you know getting them back on track basically yeah S i mean so let's just talk about this event and i guess sort of these small size eight team kind of tournaments you know it's it's still a three-day event um and kind of on the first day you guys pretty much just play one game and you won and you're done and you're out how do you feel about these kinds of you know four six eight team events is it i mean you're, yeah you're traveling but you know there's less games and there's you know kind of less less stress on the players do you think this is a good thing you know even though you're traveling week after week it's still you know just an eight team event i i, l I love it i mean uh, it's 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 good because you also get the time to prepare for each team you're you're facing so uh like for example like egca we played three best of threes in a row mm -hmm. and we could only prepare for one game at a time you cannot like prepare for three teams and have a game plan for everyone then you're gonna get really screwed up in your head so we basically had no no time to have a game plan against either of those teams afterwards uh, so it becomes a lot more difficult if it's like that but having a couple or you even have a day right now to prepare for each team so i think that's really really good and i think it's something that uh you all the players enjoy as well I they don't really care how how long they're away like it's this is a relaxing very you know very good uh, you know relaxed event so it's comfortable for for the players and everyone ab involved as well okay so looking forward you know you guys are pretty much you guys are done today um are you gonna stay and watch the the next matches um nips playing later but you know the group b is looking pretty strong who do you think you're gonna face um you know tomorrow uh i can't even remember who, who is it uh it's Navi or because they're taking the second place. Um, so it'd be whoever Navi loses. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have no clue. Like, 
they're all so good teams, so we'll we'll have to check like during the games. We'll obviously write some stuff down and and see uh, on every team, but just general discuss discussions and and looking at the games, and uh, then once we know, uh, we'll we'll start to fully prepare for the team. Uh, but I can't I can't make that call. It's two it's three very very good teams, and everyone can go for it. Okay, let's talk about the game a little bit. So you know before we had the CZ, then we had the Tech Nines, and now we have kind of the SMGs. And um, you know, Nip popularized the second round force buy with the um, when when the CZ and the Tech Nines were so strong. And now with the SMGs, it's kind of they seem like they kind of stopped doing that. How, how do how do you think the current you know meta game is, and and what do you think about it in general? I mean, it's 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 fine, you know. SMGs are really really strong, but at the same time, yeah, it's it's kind of hard to discuss. But uh, I mean, I think Valve wants the meta to constantly change and not find the perfect meta where it just stays at the same place every time. Uh, so you know, it it gets to the point where us players we have things to figure out, new things to like test. Uh, you know, with the SMGs, we experimented with the second uh, round SMG drop, like force buy and stuff like that. So I think it's fun. Uh, it might not be like perfect in every way, but at least you know things are keeping keeps changing, and and value are, are good at listening and uh, and seeing like what what's exciting for both the viewers, the players, and and you know everyone involved, both tur tournament organizers as well. So I think it's uh, it's fine. They've Basically, there's always a lot of hate once the the patches come out, but I think r l right now everyone's like pretty chill about it. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think the biggest thing that that um, I find that you know when when a new patch hits is that the changes aren't necessarily you know um, like previewed. They just ju they just instantly come out, you know, and the players have to adapt, whether it be on a Friday when the tournament's starting or, you know, whether they have a week or two break. So, I mean, how do you think Valve can improve in terms of having some kind of line between pro players where they can at least say, like, okay, hey, we're thinking about, you know, buffing SMGs a little bit. This is our reasoning. What do you guys think? And, you know, some back and forth. I mean, I, I people have said, like, uh, they should have test servers, blah, blah, blah. But... In reality, like who, what, what, what would the yeah? Why would the players even test it? They might have tested it for like half an hour, had mm -hmm. like a very, very extreme opinion, but they haven't seen it play out. Mm -hmm. So it's it's very like yeah, sure, it could be good, but at the same time, it could just be like very extreme opinions uh, that you know that will affect the actual patch, mm -hmm. but they don't actually have anything to back those opinions up really. So. I think it's a. I'm kind of split on it, so I I think it's fine what they're doing. Like, they're they're pushing our the players to to be innovative, creative, and you know it's it's exciting to watch. Uh, even though the SMGs, I mean it it kind of balanced the game out uh, with the force buys because like with SMGs, because now as especially as T, uh, if you have uh, SMGs, you can clear corners. Like the problem with the uh, with the C sets and uh, the force by second round force buys, especially when you were T, so you'll uh, have like full AKs. Mm -hmm. Let's say on Inferno, you go up short, mm -hmm. and uh, you kind of need to stutter step because every time you see every a CT, every time you see like a, a CT player take a peek, mm -hmm. you will stop and try to aim him right, mm -hmm. uh, and then you'll stop and like stutter, and the rotations come in, and then eventually you know pop flash, and you know they kind of just dance you uh, out of the game. And uh, with SMGs now. You can just rush, and doesn't matter if he, you don't need to stop, right? So yeah. you can just rush and push, uh, push the guys who who, who wants to dance with you. Uh, it kind of sounds weird, but th that's actually how it works, right. like technically, um, and that's why SMGs counter uh, the the force buys uh, in a sense. Do you find now maybe you know the actual gun itself is is pretty good, the ability to run and gun and sort of counter the the uh, pistols but do you think the kill reward is too much because now it seems like you know depending on who whoever wins let's say the terrorists win first gun round um but they also win two smg rounds like the the amount of bank that that 
uh, a certain side gets um is it too much because you know we we saw now that you know you can win the th first three rounds and then lose the first gun round and then you know you have maybe enough bank to buy once or maybe even twice again w what do you think about that I mean it's uh it's partly like really really overpowered uh, but uh <laughs> because you can have like a third round op uh right. with uh, full nades and full armor uh I mean it's maybe it's not overpowered because it's the same for yeah. both sides but um Different yeah and plus you can kind of um, have a, a some sort of not mind games if if they keep too many SMGs you'll make a second round force yeah. bite instead uh and then they'll actually, let's say they know you're doing a second yeah. uh, round force buy, they'll buy M4s and they'll actually lose the money anyways. So uh, it's it's kind of like I'm 50-50 on that as well. I'm kind of thinking like you could actually counter it, but at the same time, it's it's a bit, maybe they should actually lower it to 300 because it's it's so sh a cheap weapon. If you get like two kills in the Mac-10, then you've earned money. Right. I mean, so, I mean, it's it sounds like, there's at least you know decisions to be made in the first three or four or five rounds do you think that's a good thing because you know before it used to be pretty static like the gameplay was just like bam 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 you lost this etc do you think now it, it is it just too random or is it actually good where you can you know kind of like mind game your opponent and kind of like fake him out a bit i think i think it's a, a good thing you know Eventually, I think the meta will be at one point where someone figure out what's the best way, yeah. But giving players more options that's viable is, is definitely something that I think is good. Um, you know, not too many options. Like, every, every weapon shouldn't be really, really good, you know. There should be balance, obviously. But uh, I, I think, you know, playing with the player's mind and forcing them to be creative and... and uh, Figuring options out for themselves with with the tools they're giving uh, uh, given uh, in patches, I think that's you know great, and I think it just further develops uh, not only the players in the teams but uh, the game itself. Okay, so what's next for Fnatic um, after this event? You have Fragbite. Is that an online league or does it have an offline component? It's an online league with an offline component. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so, so what's what's next for you guys after Fragbite and after all that? Um, well, before that, I think uh, we're going to DreamHack Open in France mm -hmm. uh, next weekend, and uh, the weekend after that, we're going to Gfinity here in London as well. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Um. All right. Uh. So, do you have any last shoutouts or you know other sponsors? Well, just thank every fan, all the fans that uh, keep cheering for us or any other team, you know, watching, uh, means a lot that you guys are making us be being able to do what we do. And uh, obviously I want to thank my sponsors and uh, thanks uh, Team Liquid for, for the interview.